welcome back to my channel. In today's video, as you'll see by the title, we are going to be rounding up all the books that I read last year and my favourite ones. Obviously, I read quite a lot of books last year. I read about 70 and I'm not going to talk about 70 books today. I'm only going to talk about my top 12. So basically, my favourite of each month. If you want to hear more from me about my books and everything that I'm reading, I do full reviews on each book that I read on my Bookstagram account. I will put the link on the screen here and I'll show a little clip of my account on screen now. So if you guys love books and you love reading reviews about books then definitely follow me on there and check it out especially if after you've watched this video you want to hear more about the books that I read then definitely check it out but in the meantime I really hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and let's get into it na, 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 na. Yes, let's get straight in there with our first book, which is January 2021. So in January 2021, I actually read seven books. Um, I'll put on screen all the books that I actually read that month. Um, this is just the thing that I post on my Instagram. At the end of every single month, I do like a roundup. So I'll post that on screen here. Um, but my favourite book out of all of these was actually The Flat Share by Beth O'Leary. Um, now this is like a fiction romance novel. It was like my favourite book at the start of the year. Fee needs a cheap flat and fast. Leon works nights and needs cash. Their friends think they're crazy, but it's the perfect solution. Leon occupies the one bed flat while Tiffy's at work in a day and she has the run of the place the rest of the time. But with obsessive ex-boyfriends, demanding clients at work, wrongly imprisoned brothers, and of course, the fact they still haven't met yet, they're about to discover that if you want the perfect home, you need to throw the rule book out the window. So the reason I loved this book is it was so cosy, it was so easy to read. And if you're a romance novel lover, but you like them with a little bit of a twist, or you like a bit more contemporary, something a bit different, I really loved the whole vibe of this book. Like the fact that these two are living in the same flat, but they've never seen seen each other just brought some really interesting dynamics and conversations and just put a really interesting twist into this romance novel so yeah really loved this book and that was my favorite one of January Okay, so these ones are my favourite books of February 2021. Um, and in that month, I actually read 10 books. I read quite a lot. But out of all of these, my favourite was definitely The Family Upstairs. Um, so this one is by Lisa Jewell. It's a thriller, suspense, psychological thriller and psychological fiction. Um, and yeah, let me read what it's about. So in a large house in London's fashionable Chelsea, a baby is awake in her cot. Well fed and cared for, she is happily waiting for someone to pick her up. In the kitchen lie three decomposing corpses. Close to them is a hastily scrawled note. They've been dead for several days, but who has been looking after the baby and where did they go? Two entangled families and a house with the darkest of secrets. So this is probably my favourite book of the entire year. Like this is my top, top favourite one. And actually the second one is coming out this year, which I'm incredibly excited for. But this book just kept you guessing so many twists and turns and it just really dug into like the family history, um, all the things that have been going on in the past. It kind of flipped back and forth to like present day. It followed lots of storylines of different characters within the book. It just had so much so much depth to it and like so much information and it just made it so exciting to read and it was a huge page turner. So highly recommend this book okay so then we move on to march 2021 so march i read five books this is my little roundup picture um, and my favorite one of all of these was actually this one and this one is 50 50 by steve kavana and it's a thriller fiction suspense and legal thriller um so this one i actually came across because i joined um I joined a book club. This book I absolutely loved. So this book is basically about um, a guy called Eddie Flynn and it's actually a series which I didn't know until after I read the book. So I actually have gone back and been reading the rest of the series. This one is basically about two sisters who go on trial against each other for the murder of their father. And one of them did it, one of them didn't, but they're both saying it's the other person. So Eddie Flynn is basically a lawyer and his job is to represent one of the sisters and prove that they are innocent 
even if he's not sure if they are. Um, and this was such an interesting book. So many twists and turns. You're constantly guessing the whole way, like the whole way through. I'm like, it's Alexandra. No, it's Sophia. No, it's Alexandra. No, it's Sophia. No, it's Alex. Like I was flipping the whole time because it's literally 50-50 chance. Um, and the ending was absolutely brilliant. So if you love books like that, where it keeps you guessing, they're real page turners. It's quite fast paced. Um, yeah then I highly recommend this book. I absolutely loved it. Okay, so next we've got April. In April, I read four books and my favourite book out of all of these four books was The Couple Next Door by Cherie Le Penna. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Um, but this is a novel, mystery, domestic fiction, thriller and suspense. Um, so people are capable of almost anything. You never know what's happening on the other side of the wall. Your neighbour told you that she didn't want your six month old daughter at the dinner party. Nothing personal, she just couldn't stand her crying. Your husband said it was fine. After all, you only live next door. You'll have the baby monitor and you'll take it in turns to go back every half hour. Your daughter was sleeping when you checked on her last, but now as you race up the stairs in your deathly quiet house, your worst fears are realised. She's gone. You've never had to call the police before, but now they're in your home and who knows what they'll find. What would you be capable of when pushed past your limit? So this book was crazy good. Like it was so good. Again, it kept you guessing. Um, you're like, what has happened to the baby? Like it can only be a few people. Like what's going on? What's happened? Um, and yeah, it just the reveal at the end, the ending, it was all just exactly what I want in a thriller, in a psychological thriller where your mind's like, who's done it? Who's done it? What's happening? What's going on? Like, you're just guessing the entire time. This was exactly that kind of book and I highly recommend it. Okay, now on to May, May 2021. I read six books in May. These are all the books that I read in May. But my favourite one out of all of these was actually The Wedding by Ruth Hild. Um, so this is actually described the genre as thriller, suspense, psychological thriller and psychological fiction, domestic fiction and noir fiction. So I didn't really know what noir fiction meant so I actually looked it up and the definition is a subgenre of crime fiction. In this subgenre, right and wrong are not clearly defined while the protagonists are seriously and often tragically flawed. Um, so yeah, this book was crazy she's been dreaming about this day for as i said for 18 years she didn't realize the perfect day would turn into the perfect nightmare i was so excited to send out the wedding invitations carefully writing everyone's names on thick cream paper in beautiful cursive script i had no idea i was inviting someone to destroy our marriage i couldn't wait to say i do surrounded by loved ones clinking champagne glasses i couldn't imagine that one of them would try to hurt me it was meant to be the first day of the rest of our lives and I never thought it would be the end of my life as I knew it. We were meant to share our vows to toast our future, but when the truth comes out, shocking the onlooking guests and ripping my heart out, is a happy ever after even possible? Yeah, I mean, pretty self-explanatory what that one's about and it was so good. So good. Loved it. Um, in June, I read a load of books. I actually read 13 books in June, which is what all these were, but they were all by the same author. They were all by an author called Maggie Hartley. And Maggie Hartley writes books about foster care, basically. She is a foster carer. She's been foster caring for years and years and years. It's been her job for ages. And she's fostered so many children during that time. So all the information in it is changed to keep it confidential, but all the stories are real stories that actually happened. Um, and they were crazy. Like they were short stories, most of them. So they were quite short, only like 100 to 200 pages. So I read them quite quickly, which is how I got through so many. But oh my goodness, they were heartbreaking. They were beautiful. Like reading about the foster care system was also really crazy. So yeah, I'm just going to read the genre of this and then move on because I could say so much about this one, but I'm not going to. So my favourite one out of all of these was actually Denied a Mummy. Um, and again, the genre, non-fiction, true stories, foster care stories and short stories. So this one is when Maggie's latest placement arrives on her doorstep, it is clear that Sean, Dougie and their big sister Mary have been through unspeakable traumas in their short lives. Violent and malnourished, the siblings have been left to fend for themselves by their drug addicted parents. Maggie must use all of her skills and experience as a foster carer to help these damaged siblings to learn to be children again. With much love, care and patience, their behaviour gradually starts to improve and social services start looking for a forever family for them. 
but alarm bells start to ring when Maggie meets the couple who've been matched to adopt the siblings. It's clear that they're looking for the perfect ready-made family and they're not going to get it with these vulnerable brothers and sister. Despite raising her concerns to the social workers, Maggie is powerless to prevent the adoption from going ahead and she must put aside her own fears to help the siblings settle in with their new parents. But she can't shake the feeling of dread as she waves them goodbye. A few months later, Maggie's worst nightmares come true when she learns that the children have been handed back to the care of social services following the breakdown of the adoption. Maggie must fight to get the children returned to her, but is it too late to undo the damage that has been done? Oh my gosh, like I, if you have a heart for foster care or you're interested in foster care or anything like that, I highly recommend reading these books because they just give you such an insight into the system, into how it works, into the kind of children that go into the system and it's just heartbreaking. Um, but yeah, that like, I would say half of these books that I read, I cry, like actually cry reading them. They're so sad, some of them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's real life and as heartbreaking as it is to read it, it's also so interesting, like just to see how they work. Um, but yeah, moving on, moving on swiftly. Um, July 2021 here, I read four books, but my favourite out of these was actually The Mothers by Sarah J. Norton. It's a thriller, mystery, psychological thriller and psychological fiction. Um, five women, they meet at their NCT group. The only thing they have in common is they are all pregnant. Five secrets. Three years later, they are all good friends, aren't they? One missing husband. Now the police have come knocking. Someone knows something. But the trouble with secrets is that someone always tells. Um, so, yeah, really love this book. Again, it kept you guessing who did it kind of thing. Um, and these women like it follows the story of each of them so it's and I love books like this I love books where it's like a different like perspective throughout the whole book yeah I just loved this book loved it so interesting it kept me guessing I was hooked and it was a real page turner in August 2021 I read three books in August and my favorite was The Silent Patient by Alex Mc I don't know how you say that but this is quite a popular book um it's a thriller novel mystery suspense psychological thriller and psychological fiction and I saw this book everywhere even all over Instagram in the shops like advertised on Amazon like I literally saw this book everywhere um so I was like I'm gonna read it I'm gonna give it a go so it was in my wish list for ages I finally purchased it um, and yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was really good. So this one is about Alicia Berenson's life is seemingly perfect. A famous painter married to an in-demand fashion photographer. She lives in a grand house with big windows overlooking a park in one of London's most desirable areas. One evening, her husband Gabriel returns home late from a fashion shoot and Alicia shoots him five times in the face and then never speaks another word. Alicia's refusal to talk or give any kind of explanation turns a domestic tragedy into something far grander, a mystery that captures the public imagination and casts Alicia into notoriety. Notoriety. The price of her art skyrockets and she, the silent patient, is hidden away from the tabloids and spotlight at The Grove, a secure forensic unit in North London. Theo Faber is a criminal psychotherapist who has waited a long time for the opportunity to work with Alicia. His determination to get her to talk and unravel the mystery of why she shot her husband takes him down a twisting path into his motiv own motivations, a search for the truth that threatens to consume him. Yeah, this book was crazy. Um, it was quite dark. It was quite mysterious. It was quite shocking. Um, but yeah, it just kept you guessing. It was such a page turner. Um, and yeah, really enjoyed it. So September 2021, I actually read two books, but one of them I didn't finish. So technically I only finished one of them. My favourite, obviously, the only book I read, the other one I didn't finish, was The Defence by Steve Cavanagh. Um, again, a thriller, fiction, suspense, legal thriller. So this is the first book in the Eddie Flynn series. So if you remember back at the start of the video, um, I talked about a book called Fifty Fifty. So this book is the first book in his series. Um, it's been, it'd been in my wish list for ages. It finally dropped down to a price I was happy to pay. So I got it and this is what it's about. Eddie Flynn used to be a con artist. Then he became a lawyer. Turned out the two weren't that different. 
It's been over a year since Eddie vowed never to set foot in a courtroom again, but now he doesn't have a choice. Oleg Volchek, the infamous head of the Russian mafia in New York, has strapped a bomb to Eddie's back and kidnapped his 10-year-old daughter, Amy. Eddie only has 48 hours to defend Volchek in an impossible murder trial and win, if he wants to save his daughter. Under the scrutiny of the media and the FBI, Eddie must use his razor-sharp wit and every con artist trick in the book to defend his client and ensure Amy's safety. With the time on his back ticking away, can Eddie convince the jury of the impossible? This book was amazing. Like, oh my gosh, this book was so good. Again, it kept you guessing. I love legal thrillers as well because they are like thrillers. They keep you guessing. It's like real page turners, but it also has like proper legal content as well and like information about the legal system. I don't know how much of it is like actually fully accurate. I think some of it is accurate. Some of it might be like a bit more fiction. Um, but yeah, it just makes the book so much more interesting, like seeing all the legal side of things and reading about that as well. Um, if you've ever seen Suits um, and you enjoyed like the legal side of Suits, this is like the criminal version. Like Suits is very corporate law. Um, this is like criminal law and it's just so good. Like I, I could read every single book in a row, but they just keep their value. Like some books drop to 99p really quickly, really easily these just never seem to drop so i haven't been able to read this next one after this yet but it is coming and i am trying um but yes if you have access and are able to read the series i highly recommend if you love thriller if you love law crime or law suspense or law fiction or law thrillers you will absolutely love these books so definitely check them out okay october i read one book this was my roundup and this book obviously was my favorite because it's the only one i read and this was Snowflakes Over the Starfish Cafe by Jessica Redland. And it's a romance novel, a humour, contemporary romance and domestic fiction. So I have read every single one of Jessica Redland's books. I absolutely love them. They're so brilliant. Um, again, like obviously if I read a thriller in a, in a month and still read Jessica Redland, like the thriller does tend to win unless it's not as good of a thriller. But I still love her books. They're beautiful. Like the way that they're set, like the places they're set and the descriptions of everything is just so beautiful. It's like, I want to live there. I want to be there. I want to buy a house there. I want to raise my children there. Like the places that she talks about and that she's created just sounds so stunning. Um, and yeah, her themes always have like, like a traumatic side of things. So like, not like traumatic, like really like thriller traumatic, but um like her characters always have a past or things they're working through things they're dealing with um and it just kind of makes it more serious it makes it a bit deeper of a romance novel about two broken hearts um since she inherited the starfish cafe holly has poured her heart into the business striving to keep her mother's traditions and warm-hearted spirit alive but behind closed doors holly is searching for true happiness as she grieves the tragic loss of her family who were once the beating heart of the cafe an unexpected meeting. Jake lives by two rules. Don't let anyone get close and don't talk about what happened. Little does he know that a chance meeting at the Starfish Cafe, facilitated by a fluffy lost dog, is about to turn his world upside down. The chance to love again. Can Holly and Jake break down the barriers that have been holding them back from finding love and happiness before Christmas comes around? After all, with courage, nothing is impossible. Okay, so December 2021, the last month, um, I read 10 books in this month. Again, November, I didn't read anything. And my favourite one by far was actually The Magpie Society, Two for Joy by Zoe Sugg and Amy McCulloch. Um, it's a crime, mystery, thriller um, and a young adult thriller. So one of the things I will say about this book, and it's actually part of a series, the first one is one for sorrow the second one is two for joy the one i'm talking about today like right now is two for joy it's the most recent one it came out in december and i loved it so what i will say is if you like the idea of thrillers um suspense novels anything like that i would but you're like not sure if you can handle like you're just not sure if you're going to be able to read them, but you like the idea of them. I would 100% start with young adult thrillers. Um, this is how I got into it. I read books like One of Us is Lying and Two Can Keep a Secret. And they're by Karen, Karen something. 
Um, I'll put more, I'll put it on screen here. And um, these are the kind of books I read to kind of ease myself into thrillers to be like, am I gonna like them? Am I gonna enjoy them? Are they gonna freak me out? Am I gonna get scared? Um, so I would really recommend if you like the idea of thrillers but you're not quite sure, definitely start with a young adult thriller because they're for younger children, um, and younger teens, and they're not they're not too much where you're reading it like, oh my gosh, that's a lot. But they have enough thriller and suspense in them where it keeps you going. Um, so yeah, they're a really good starting point and I find that I really enjoy them. And sometimes I fancy a thriller, but I'm just not quite in the headspace or the emotional space to handle like a dark, deep, intense, traumatic thriller. Um, so young adult thrillers are always perfect for those times where you want a thriller, but you're just not wanting something really heavy. The Magpie Society is basically a society that is in, like based in a boarding school. Um, this new girl joins the school. This is what the first book's about. A new girl joins the school at a time where one of the students has been, like has died. Everyone thinks that she was killed. The police try and investigate, but they don't have enough information, so they forget about it. So then the students decide that they're going to start investigating it. So the new girl and this other girl that's been at the school for years start investigating this case. Lots of other students get involved. They start a podcast. They tr like actually start to find out information. And then the Magpie Society catches on to what they're doing um, and it tries to help them, tries to stop them, tries to hide it don't really know what is the magpie society what are they doing um and this is actually the second one um a deadly disappearance a race against time and at the 11th hour a shocking revelation audrey and ivy determined to bring their fellow student lola radcliffe's killer to justice find themselves in the middle of another mystery when a friend disappears in suspicious circumstances their only clue is a mysterious card left by the enigma enigmatic magpie society with time running out and the police baffled audrey and ivy must delve deeper than ever into the dark secrets that their school is hiding someone is playing a deadly game and to beat them audrey and ivy have to start rewriting the rules so i really love this book it's definitely not the best thriller i've ever read like at all but for days where i just want to i want a thriller but i don't want something intense like this was a really nice read um but yeah that's the end of this video i'm really hoping it's not too long i've actually been filming for half an hour now um but i'm hoping i can cut it down and make it short and sweet for you guys um so you can still hear all the books but i really hope you enjoyed this video if you like these kind of videos don't forget to give it a big thumbs up so i know to make more of them um and definitely if you haven't already come and follow me on my bookstagram i will again show my bookstagram page here so that you can have a look and see if you like it if you like the look of it and you want to follow me on there then definitely do to come over and check it out i post a review of every single book that i read so it's really great content on there and i'm really proud of it so definitely check it out um but yeah i really hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe down below and i'll see you in my next one bye guys